You know what? I won't look. How about that? I'll do 20. Hey, welcome to the game. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm there. still in your moves, yeah. What are we going to do now? Well, I don't know. Should I see what the board is, I guess. What if you don't look? Right. Oh, I don't look? Well, do you want to do like flip one and then bed or something? Or I don't know. You, you tell me. What is going on, boys and girls? Well, mostly boys, because I think 95% of my following are males. But regardless, today we got another insane session for you, and I really do mean insane. I know you guys really like day one sessions of the week-long trip out here in Vegas, and if you did enjoy that one, this one, I gotta tell you, doesn't even come close. It doesn't compare. So stick around to the end, you won't be disappointed. But before we get into the poker, this is day number five, and like normal, I got a solid workout in, and I typically don't eat as much when I go on poker trips. I always lose around two or three pounds from all the walking and not having my kitchen readily available. So to make up for the lack of calories and so we don't lose too much weight, I decided to get some sushi. All you can eat, of course. Would we really do it any other way? We go to a place off Flamingo a couple miles off this trip called Yama Sushi. It's a small place, but I came here many years ago because I stayed at a hotel literally next door. So I walked on over one day, grubbed down, and loved it. So been coming here to this spot ever since when I come to Vegas when I'm feeling like some sushi. Not every time, but almost. And not going to get crazy on the details, but we destroyed a lot of food. The waitress was so cute too. She told me like halfway through about the if you don't finish your meal or your order, you owe the cost of what's extra. And I was polite and just said, oh, okay, well, thank you. Thank you for telling me. But thinking to myself, I'm a big boy. I got this. I got some new rolls that I never tried before. One called Happy Ending and the other called Snow in Vegas. The Snow in Vegas one, I got to tell you, hands down, was my most favorite and also got a chicken teriyaki roll and a beef teriyaki roll. It was only five pieces each, but massive, massive pieces. I mean, look at how huge this one is. And had the normal rolls as well, the California, the rainbow, the nigiri pieces, which were only two to order, so got many of those. Mostly all of them, salmon, shrimp, tuna, yellowtail, halibut. And here's the rest of what I ate and the total of what it would have cost if I'd have gotten it straight up. It would have been over $150. Damn, that's a big difference. And I went during lunch too, so only paid 26 bucks. So that's why I recommend to clients to rarely eat out and that it's much better for you to just make the food at home. For one, you never know how the food is prepared. Added butter, oil, just random things that they throw in to make the food taste better. And two, me personally, I'd go broke eating out the same number of times that the average American does. So $154 compared to $26. Talk about a plus EV move. And speaking of plus EV, let's get into the session. It does start off slow, I'm not gonna lie, but it builds, I promise. Similar to the session yesterday, we came to an Old Faithful spot, the MGM Grand. It only has a 1-2 no limit game, but with the no max buy-in structure, it can play like any stake that you'll find in Vegas. We start the session off around 9 p.m., get involved with a few little hands. I believe the first one was Ace-King. We open, then C-Bet the flop, take it down. And this one, same kind of thing. Queen-Jack, open, C-Bet the flop, and continue on the turn, take it down. The first interesting hand we're gonna go over, we have 5-8 of spades at the end of the gun. We open, again, to $10, folds around to the button, who makes the call, and the blinds get out of the way. So we're heads up to a flop out of position and it comes 10, four, three with one spade. We miss, but have backdoor everything. We're first to act and we see bet, make it $10, the same as the pre-flop open. And he's a non-believer, which I don't blame him at all. I don't even believe myself to be honest either. So onto a turn and we hit something. It's a five, it's a five of diamonds. We now have middle pair, so gonna target all floating hands or can even get a call from ace three, ace four suited. So we throw out $20, maybe he can go even bigger to really charge, but if he does have a 10, he's not folding even for that bigger sizing. He does make the call. So with $83 in the middle, the river comes and it's another five, let's freaking go. It's a five of hearts, just like we planned it. Now we do hope he has a 10, we're first to act and it's early, don't really know this player, not sure if he likes to bet if shown weakness, so we can't take that risk of checking to him. We probably would go big if we missed, so gonna do the same with our value hands as well. We toss in one black chip, betting over the size of the pot. 
This puts my opponent into the tank. He looks back at the board and then pushes all his chips in into the middle. He only has a little over $200, so basically $100 more for us to call. It's kind of a no-brainer. We call, he flips his cards over and has the exact same hand, 5-8. I just laugh and we split the pot. The case five saved him from losing the hand because if there was no five or eight on the river, I bet the same amount and then there's no way he's calling with a pair of fives. I was the aggressor. So I had an excuse. Yes, I did have an excuse. Mine was suited and I was the initial aggressor. Well, that's some valuable information. Players are willing to call 5x opens with 5-8 offsuit and call continuation bets with just a backdoor straight draw. Not even potential open-ended backdoor straight draw because if the 6 or 7 comes on the turn, that's only a gut shot. So we both lose money on this hand because the rake, lame. This next hand happens 30 minutes or so later. We're in the low jack. There's an under the gun shuttle to $5, folds to us, and we look down at two black aces. The best of the best, the best starting hand in poker. So we open things up to $15, but then get told that it wasn't a straddle. It was just a limp for $2. So made the raise a little bigger than normal, but it's okay, no big deal. Now she gives him change. See, always gotta be paying attention at all times. And not sure why we weren't, to be honest. But anyway, action folds to the big blind who calls the $15. And the under the gun closing the action calls as well. So three ways to a flop in position with the best starting hand in poker. And the flop comes queen eight four rainbow. It's a pretty safe and dry board. The big blind who's first to act picks up his entire stack, which is around 300 in greens, puts it in the middle, but then just drops one chip for $25. Wow, I was thinking he was doing something crazy there for a second, but what is with the donk lead guy, seriously? It is so frustrating to me when this happens. Check and flow. Am I gonna be forced to have a course titled check and flow? I'm honestly starting to go into that direction as a content creator cause so, so many people make this mistake. And I'm documenting this. I don't want you to make that mistake. Back to the hand though. The under the gun folds his cards, action on us. And like I said, he has around $300 in his stack total and I want it all. So I don't wanna raise now and blow him off whatever he's donking with. So we just make the call for $25. Off to a turn, heads up, and it comes a two of clubs, bringing in the full rainbow. The big blind first to act thinks, and he's probably never seen any of my videos cause he continues and doubles the flop bet and makes it two greens. He obviously has something that we could be assured of. And if he is valuing top hair, he's not gonna fold to a small raise. He might even jam facing a small raise. I mean, I guess if he has a small set, I will gladly give him $300 for catching his two outer, but I don't want a scare card to come on the river killing the action. So we raise here and make it $130 to go. He basically snap jams $260 total. It's only a min click, if not smaller. So I snap call his jam. The river is the worst card in the deck. It's a queen of clubs. I tell him a queen is good. He seems reluctant to show his cards, but does and has pocket nines. I did not expect him to show that hand, which brings me all the way back to donk leads. I guess from his perspective, putting us on ace king, ace jack, or just betting that we don't have a queen, I guess, but the continuation on the turn and facing $130 raise, something in your mind has to scream that you're behind. So all right, let's play this hand the normal way or the Matty Ice way, the check and flow way. He checks, the under the gun checks, I see bet 30, maybe $35. He cold calls and the under the gun gets out of the way. So now we're heads up. The turn is a blank, total blank. He checks and flow again and us having aces maybe continue or just say we don't continue on the turn cause not really worried about much. Flushes, obviously not, not really any straight draws and thinking aces in this spot might only be a two street of value type hand. So we do check and the river comes that other queen. This is his chance to make that move cause it's not likely that I have a queen since there's already two out there and say he jams for over $200. That puts our hand in a really tough spot cause aces at that point is really just a bluff catcher. Or say I continue, I do continue on the turn for 65 or $75, he calls again. The river is that same queen. This is his chance to jam, to lead jam. And if he does, we have to fold, right? Getting cold called twice, he has to have a queen. 
So all I'm really saying, hypothetically, if things would have played out the check and flow way, he could have still won this hand in a few different ways. I want you guys to comment down below your thoughts on this analysis of the analysis. I really want to know if my followers are on the same page as me about checking in flow. We go card dead for an hour and table was pretty soft. Action was slow, so not much happened till this one. We're in the hijack, the other gun, first to act, opens at $15. Folds to us, and we have a decent hand, king nine of clubs. I told you not much has happened, so let's play this one. We made the call for $15, the cutoff button and small blind fold. The big blind likes his hand enough to call $13 more, so we're three ways to a flop in position, and it comes seven, nine, four with two spades in a club. I'll take it, flopping top pair with backdoor flush draw. The big blind checks to the aggressor, and he c-bets $40. Pretty big, wasn't expecting that much, almost a pot sized bet on a board that shouldn't hit him. So gonna play this one cautiously, and I don't think we can do much here besides call. A raise might be overplaying, maybe if we had backdoor straight to go along with it, but that's what we do, we call the $40. The big blind is done with the hand, he folds, so off to a turn, heads up, and it pairs the board to seven of hearts. The under the gun continues on this card for $65, Smaller than the flop bet in relation to the pot, but the continuation, many alarm bells are going off now in my head. I still think there's a chance our top pair is good, could be on a draw, a something of spades, or just betting that we missed as well, putting us on a flush draw. So we make the call for $65, hoping for a brick river. It kind of comes at the five of hearts. Flush draws miss, but the most obvious straight gets there. And unless he has specifically six, eight of spades, I don't think he has a straight. He slows down this time and checks. And I don't think betting this river is necessary. He's not calling if he has a draw and a smaller pocket pair doesn't play like this. So I don't know what we can really get value from. So we do check back and get shown pocket kings. It makes sense now, the larger preflop open and larger c-bet, so opponent got a good run out that our hand connected to take down a decent sized pot. After that hand we go up to the front to ask for a table change because we heard a lot of commotion on the table next to us and saw 3 or 4 players that had around two to 4 thousand dollars in their stacks, so trying to get on that ASAP. But they said we have to wait for someone to fill in or leave. I don't know the rule because there was a seat available at that table, but they said someone had to come in to fill our spot first. A little frustrating, so it's really just a waiting game now. But as we're waiting, kind of piggybacking on the frustration, there's a button straddle to $5. We're in the big blind. It folds all the way around to the small blind, and there was no raises, so it skips the button onto the small blind who folds, and it's now on us, and we look down at queen seven offsuit. We call $3 more because we're already almost half invested and lucky for us, the button checks his option. And what do you know, we hit top pair. We check in flow, not to the aggressor this time, but just in flow and the button must have hit something because he bets out $10. Not really in the mood to raise, feels more like a small blind versus big blind type hand. So we call, the turn is a five of clubs bringing the backdoor flush draw and the most obvious open-ended straight draw gets there. We check again to him and he continues, this time for $20. No reason again to raise. Maybe he can deny equity from pair plus straight draw, but we just call playing this like a fish. Off to a river, and it's an overcard to our pair. It's a king of diamonds. We check, hoping it goes check, check, but he has different plans. He bets again, this time for $30. Well, we've come this far. Let's see what he has. So we make the call and get shown the bad news. He flopped two pairs, six, nine offsuit. Just bad play, bad vibes at this table, but lucky for us, the floor person calls us over to switch tables. We're up maybe $20, so basically even, and when we walked over to the next table, you can just tell people were drinking, having some fun, and as we walked up, a massive hand was going on. A flop straight versus a turn bow. Seat six, the guy who is the main villain in this vlog, loses an over 3k pot. And what sucks is the guy who won literally leaves 10 minutes later. The definition of a hit and run. So we brought over $1,000 from the first table. We add on another 10 blacks to match what was going on at this table. Because a few players still had around 2k each. So plenty of money still to fight for. So in the game now for 2k, the most we ever bought in for at a 1-2 game. And there's drunk people with money. So let's make something happen.
But before I get into the hands, the guy in seat six, remember the main villain, was raising blind every single hand from $20 to like $40. Yeah, I got money, man, but I got looking at my shit. <laughs> <laughs> See, the players are laughing, joking how they don't have the money like this guy to throw around. So maybe our fifth hand dealt in at this table. We have queen eight of spades in the small blind. So facing a blind open at $35, what do you do? And the trick with this guy is if you raise, he'd look at his cards. So say we raise here because queen eight of spades is most likely ahead of any two random cards. Will you tell these guys yeah, I don't look at my cards pre yeah. yeah. So nine hands. Yeah. You didn't look? That's, that's damn good. Though. Will you tell him you played with, you dealt with me all day yesterday. Do I look at my cards pre -flop? And see, he literally tells the table he doesn't look. And anyone that came in that was new to the table got the same story. And he wouldn't look, which was crazy. So we just call in hopes to flop good and stack this player. The big blind makes the call. So we are three ways to a flop. And it comes king seven two with two spades. We both check and flow to the blind razor. Is it just you and I? Three players. And he was gonna blind bet $45, but the big blind says no, just $10. So everyone laughs and he obliges and makes it $10. Thank you. <laughs> He's for mercy. But $10 is not going to be enough for us. We don't need the big blind in there. So we raise with our semi bluff to $40. The big blind does get out of the way. What do you got? Maddie Ice. I was, was going to wear my Gaines hat, but I've been wearing it the last like four or five days. So. Your what hat? Gaines. Oh, like, like. Yeah, working out, basically. Yeah. Got that swole on. Oh, yeah. I did have my Matty Ice hat on today, actually. Wanted to switch it up a little bit, but he does make the call for $30 more. So heads up to a turn versus a player that has only looked at one card. And we don't have to wait long for our flush. The turn is a four of spades. We have a lock on this hand. Now the question is, how much do we put in the middle? I don't even think the pot odds matter at this point. If we go half pot, full pot, one fourth pot, all the nerd stuff doesn't really apply here. I'm more just thinking, what's a number that he can call? Cause obviously some crazy amount, like $200 or even more, that'll sober you up real quick. So I think $50 is a safe amount. I, I still haven't looked at this other card. I believe you. No, oh, yeah. That's yeah, cool. I don't have a flush. It's not even remotely possible for me to have a flush, actually. He says he doesn't have a flush and makes the call. So with those comments, hoping for a non-spade, any card that's not a spade on the river, but the dealer hates us because it's a three of spades. So now losing to the ace, either losing or no way getting value, because the best he could have is the jack of spades. But we have to throw out some money. And if the card he hasn't looked at is the ace of spades, so be it. But we do throw her out $100. Now I have to look at this other one. Oh, yeah. 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 I got a pair though. What world do I need any? Thank you. Is it a pair of kings then? Uh, yeah, I would. Oh sh. But I don't, I don't think it doesn't matter what pair. Happens. I don't. Be, I don't know what in the world I would. A straight gets there. A flush gets gets there. Fun. A bigger king gets there. Bigger king is already there. Yeah, I mean, I love how <laughs> this shit just gets handy. 
I don't know what the hell I do. I, I don't know. Well, then fold. You lost. Yeah. Dang, thinking about calling down with one pair. I'm like, hurry up, let's move on. I don't know. I try and talk, help him out. Maybe he finds the table talk as weakness, but he does end up folding. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I'm gonna try and do my best to go back and forth from voiceovers to showing the table and audio footage, cause even this last hand, I could have just played the video and you'd pretty much know what was going on. I mean, I literally could have had a GoPro on my head this entire session and it would have gotten a million views already easily, no lie. All the laughs and jokes and dumb plays and talking crap, making fun of people, I really wish you guys were there. I wished I was there again and I lived it. This was just the beginning of blind raises, big all ins, hero calls, and so much more. So you're gonna wanna see till the end. Speaking of all in hands, this one we have pocket kings in the end of the gun. We're first to act and we limp, which is something we rarely do and never do with a premium as good as kings. But seat six was still raising blind. So I knew what he was gonna do. He was gonna bet for us. So try to stay with me with this one cause a lot goes on. So we limp, the cutoff limps, the button limps as well, who has 70 bucks behind. And of course C6 raises in the small blind to $21. The big blind folds and it's on us. But before we can act, the button jams for $70 that he has in his stack. I asked the dealer what's happening cause it looked like the button jammed, but he takes it back and I know that the rule is if the action doesn't change then the jam stands. So we just make the call for $21, the cutoff mucks, but the button tries to muck as well, but the dealer tells him that it has to stay cause the action didn't change. And of course seat six calls and by him jamming $66 total, it reopens the action. Kinda see what's happening now. So by us just calling, knowing the jam stays and seat six is gonna call, gives us the opportunity to do what we really wanted to do, which was put more money in the middle. So we throw in two black chips on top to make it $221 to go. We raised to 221. Wait, oh, I see, I, I was trying to figure it, okay. That's enough, I gotta look. So how much for? Uh, what is that? Sixty-six. It's just two twenty-one total. <laughs> two twenty-one total. Uh, right. One one sixty, I think. Yeah, one sixty. One fifty-five. Must have been a good hand then, huh? <laughs> Not really, I'm being honest. Well, if it was, if it was garbage, you would just let it go, so. Yeah, I mean. So it's, it's decent. I can make a straight. A straight is a decent hand. The whole time, just praying for a call. Not sure whether the table talk helped or hurt the situation, but he did fold, as you saw. And now we're heads up, all in with the button. He has pocket fours, and here's a run out. See, then that flop comes, and I didn't want that shit. I didn't have an ace. No, I know, but I just don't want that shit. Luckily, we win, but in a normal hand, having kings and an ace flop, just the absolute worst. So, a very unorthodox way to play kings. Hope you all followed okay. We've been going at this for an hour already, and this is hardly poker. The correct way to play poker anyway. This is just straight bingo, to be honest. This next hand, we're in the small blind with king eight of clubs, folds to seat six, he raises to $20, button folds, we call, and the big blind calls as well, so three ways to a flop. And it's king jack four rainbow, a really good board for us. We check obviously in flow, the big blind does as well, and seat six, sea best to $35. We call, and the big blind comes along, calls as well, which I don't really like. The turn comes, a ten of spades, which is not the best card, and honestly it's hard to really give a proper analysis the more and more I watch these hands, cause we're playing with a guy that hasn't looked at his cards, so going forward might just say what's going on and maybe give my two cents if it calls for it. 
So action checks around on this card, and the river is even worse. It's an offsuit nine, so now any queen makes it straight. Action checks around to C6, says he has a jack. I'm like, I can beat that. And the big blind shows ace queen for the absolute nuts. And the table just scratches their head like, what the f are you doing? What are you Why doing? Why not look at the other card? I have two pairs. Got it. The nut. That is gonna be. What are you doing? I'm gonna tell you my story. Right no, now. I don't want to hear your story. You would have to. What? Oh, <laughs> just heard him over. Yeah, there's no not, price. Not enough to kill you. Oh, yeah. Fuck you. Oh, now you got that. You. Hey, that just cost you a lot of money. Yeah, damn right. Cost himself money. Seat six had two pair, so we were third best. <laughs> hey, for over here, you know, if that's I, yeah, that's more right. of an insult. Yeah, that's, that's, right. that's, you guys should look in the mirror and be like, should I be uh, playing this game if I can't be the guy who doesn't even look at his cards? Hey, you, you, you see my <laughs> that's, like, that's, that's pretty pathetic. I really have to agree with him that it's mind-blowing that he still has chips. I'm having a blast playing with these guys, don't get me wrong, but it was somewhat frustrating. Like he said, we can't beat a guy that doesn't look at his cards. That's pretty sad. And as the hands go on, I want you guys to look at his chip stack and the time in the top right, and just keep in mind that this guy did not rebuy. We aren't even involved in this hand, but I still want to include it anyway. Other hand I did, but this time I did. <laughs> I feel like this is all me. I don't know why. I feel like it is. I gotta put my money where my mouth is. Yeah, of course. I just got a good feeling about this. I still don't know what I have. I just have a good feeling. Like Justin Timberlake. I got, uh, I got a feeling. <laughs> Now I gotta see what my feelings only are. One. Oh, boy, only, only one? Only one? Long. I don't know. On this yeah, board, one, 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 one's kind of one. crazy. Very crazy, yeah. Right. One's kind of crazy on this board. That is <laughs> How much? How much? Where How much do you get a call over there? I'll call 50. Any more though? No, I don't call anymore. How much will you call? Guys, yeah, you got three players in hand. You can't do Oh, that. I thought we were all family here. Well, let him fold and we'll talk about it. Let him discuss. We are, yeah, we are. Let him discuss. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to be in the we're video later. Right? We're, we're just we'll chilling. We're just hanging out, having fun. If you don't fold, we'll talk about it. All right, well, how much will you call then if he doesn't if he, Hypothetically, if he were to fold. <laughs> <laughs> I put that in your head. Okay. I told you I had a feeling about this hand. All right, look at one at least. Remember, I said that before. Yes, yes, you did. Before I flopped it's the straight, video, I yeah. said I had a feeling about this hand. I flopped the straight. You flopped the straight? Yeah. I said before I flopped the straight, I had a feeling about this hand. Mm -hmm. Well, let me, I'll show you one. You show me one. Of course. All right. Here Which one do you want? Uh, Which one do you want? The one without a six. <laughs> <laughs> you choose, just make sure it's not the six. I want to see, I want to see your bottom one then. Why ask you to see this? Oh. He's waiting on you. Sorry. Call him. Good luck. Good, good luck. Why do I need luck? I this, this, get, this game I is luck. a game of luck, man. Straight. Again, I, I know you. The fold. crazy thing is, I flopped it straight. I had three, four off. Yeah. So did I. Don't flip it. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. The crazy thing is, I had three, four. I told you guys I had a feeling about that hand. I don't think I had a club though. You were free rolling me. We would have flopped it straight. I mean, we had three, four off, Sue. Yes, I know he's playing blind, but would you call with three, four off? And in the end, it would have been a chalk pot because seat six had the exact same hand. We have ace 10 suited in this hand and I go for some raising chips. But then I'm like, what am I doing? Just a habit, I guess. But we just limp because seat six is doing all the raising for us. He does end up raising. We go five ways to a flop and hit top pair. He actually didn't see bet. So checks to us. And we have to bet, I guess. So we do, $20.
it folds to him in the big blind, and he does call, still blind. The turn is eight of hearts. He checks, we bet $30. Now he looks at his cards, says he has queen shit, and folds. Like, what's really the best way to win the max? Let him catch his top hair, and we win more? I'm like really wanting some legit advice at this point, and not just this hand, but all these hands. How would you play if you were in my shoes right now? Seriously. I'd really love to hear all the feedback on any hand that you see in this video. This next one, we have six nine of spades in the small blind, and I'll just let it play. You have to play. You're leaving? Go over there. No, 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 no. You stay right there. You know, no, 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 You stay right there. That's right. That's right. right. I'll check. Check. I'm just kidding. You want to go there? <laughs> <laughs> you think he, 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 I got news for you. He's a lot better than me. You don't need to have position on me. I do the same thing every time. It's it's him you want to worry about. You got position. <laughs> Check to you. Just the two of us. Three, two, three, three. I'll let you make the decision. Well, it is actually your decision first. Time. Well then I'll check. Okay. Oof. I said I'll make this. This this looks like I yeah. This yeah, it looks, looks like, like all you, this, yeah. This is me all day. If I don't hit this, I'll be disappointed. At least in some capacity. I'm not saying nail it, but if I don't hit this, this is a disappointment. Because that means I must have had real cards before this. <laughs> 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 now you have to look. So. I feel like I just want to call this one. Oh, Whatever. I bet it's you twenty dollars you don't have. Cyclops. Cyclops. Yeah. A, yeah, a pair cool. at that's least. Pretty cool. What is? What's your definition? Nice, 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 nice. No pair. Nothing. I have no pair. Nothing. Oh. Shit. You're betting at fifty bucks. Twenty on the side. Twenty on the no, side. Twenty on the side. Yeah. Oh. Shit. Uh, so any pair, I could have a two. Yeah. I have. To. Well now, well now folds, but I win. Wait, no, no, no. I'm so, kidding. Just play your hand. Play your hand. Play your hand. I really didn't want to play. No, I got great odds. You win. <laughs> Who you? I, you I knew it. We win, dog. We win. We win. <laughs> that's crazy. That's pretty cool. Oh, that spade. You had a blocker too. <laughs> So we hit a flush on the river and seat six had ace queen with the ace of spades. So another situation we hit and he doesn't even have a pair to call. Cause all we really are waiting for is to have a flush or a straight and he has like trips or two pair or something of that nature. You guys kind of get what I mean. So we can just stack him already, but maybe in the next one. You're good, you're good. Yeah, yeah I believe I had aces, I had aces. We don't get this hand on film. I ran out of storage on my phone because I have four days already worth of content from the last four days playing poker. And these hands I'm filming right now are five, six, even 10 minutes long because of all the chatter and side bets and craziness. I don't want to miss any of it. So during this session, I was trying to delete footage that I knew I wasn't going to use so I can make room for what's happening. So we just get the last of this one, but it's needed to talk about. We have black aces in the small blind. The normal blind raise by C6 happens. We might have just called, maybe raise. No, we actually did three bet because he looked at his hand before the flop since the raise was of magnitude. We raise 100, I think. Of course he calls and the flop is 228 with two hearts. Perfect flop. Kind of iffy, honestly, because we're still talking about the same guy, but a two is probably not even in his range for looking at his cards. So we see bet, and then the hand gets a little more normal because he raises our see bet. Not sure the amounts exactly, but we probably see bet $50. He raises, I'm guessing, to $150 or somewhere close. I think he's full of it, so we make the call. The turn is a jack of hearts, a bad card, because now there's three hearts out there. We check, but he surprisingly checks back. The river is another heart, so we check again, and he bets. Not sure the amount, but we just fold. He had the queen of hearts, so queen eight offsuit. Had two pair on the flop, had him right where we wanted him, 
And at this point, the frustration is building. Again, having so much fun at this table, but aces, having him in the palm of our hand, and the runouts are just gross. What do you call that? Uh, the 150? I'm like, I'm hey, he did raise to 150. I was right. And this goes on for another hour. Hands just like that one. Winning some of them, losing some of them. So we have the same stack that we started with, the 2K. I'm still in shock. How does seat six have chips? And how don't we have all the money? Because even more players started to do the exact same thing as him. And this was an example of it. Yeah, he's going to fold. He's, he's going to fold. We're not going to look. I mean, I kind of want to look at my hand just to see if I would have won. But yeah, it's, it's, it's all. It's, yeah, it's, 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 what are we going? Don't look. Why? I, okay, okay, I won't look. But I really. I, what is it, Mr. Nashville? Two seven off. Two seven off. Yeah, fold. 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 Yeah, folding. Yeah, he's folding. Mr. Nashville, we all fold. Yeah, folding. Okay. Go, yeah, we go, fold go, it. Go, 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 go ahead. Go, go, go ahead. Go, 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 go. Go, go. Open that one. I want that one. Yeah. No, that. Oh, get it. I said that one. <laughs> he pointed at that one. Oh. 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 Uh. What did he need? Obi said Nashville. You won. Uh, I wanted that one. What was that one? Uh, oh. Good hand. Good hand. Uh, I guess we have a nickname for him now, Mr. Nashville. The guy to our left, really cool guy, nickname Seat 6, Mr. Nashville, because that's where he was from, I guess. But he ends up winning with a pair, because the guy who went all in just had jack high. And at this point, we had a few people actually on the rails right next to us watching, watching this all go down. I'm like, I'm the lucky one here capturing it all on video. I mean, maybe I've been playing poker wrong this whole time because this guy doesn't lose. Hanging around, hanging around. Kids got El Gator blood, can't get rid of him. <laughs> Only real poker players know what movie that's from. First person to comment down below where it's from, I'll do some sort of giveaway. Have to think of something cool. <laughs> I want, I want you to be on the same playing ground as everybody else. Well, not even because you go 15 or 20 and then you still go 40. Yeah, I, I raise blind and if you guys raise, then you play. But like, if you make it like plays. 60 or so, I don't look. But if you make it like I'm all in, I'll look. Because I want, I want you to be on the same playing ground that these guys have been on. Because they've been playing with me all day. They know. It'd be a disadvantage if you didn't know that. I like that he was honest and that he stuck to his guns on what he was going to do, which was just having fun. That is something I can respect, a person that sticks to their guns. We have 6-2 of diamonds under the gun. All the raises happen, you already know by now. We go three ways to a flop, and we flop nothing. Lady Witty is in here. <laughs> Not you. Uh, I guess I can flop <laughs> because... I know he'll be your folder And apparently I'm Nitty Witty. That's my new nickname, I guess. We check to Mr. Nashville, he bets, and we fold. Oh, I can show you what I can show you what I have. No, I can show you what I have. I know, but like historically speaking, it's probably easier to play against you than somebody who's willing to gamble. He's a hundred percent correct. It's much easier to play normal than versus someone like him. When flops and boards are like that, we have six to a diamonds and he bets two thirds pot and he hasn't even looked at his cards yet, which I doubt we're ahead of. And by the end, he does look at his cards on the river. So we still technically need a pair at least to win. Or I guess we can just bet a lot. And if he doesn't have a pair, we win. But is that really a plus EV play to do that? I'm really trying to find decent hands, and by decent hands, I more mean decent boards. But as most of you know, in this game, it's hard to flop a pair. So really trying to hit that G56 for that blackout bingo, but haven't been able to so far. He keeps winning. Look, he's stacking chips up again. What is going on? Normal things happen again. We have a7 of hearts at the end of the gun this time. Limp, call, the blind raise, yada, yada, yada. And I'm sure most of you are probably saying, well, why not raise yourself or three bet when he raises? Um, did you not see the ace's hand? Well, why not do it without a premium? Okay, fair, fair. But I'm telling you guys, I have been doing that with all types of hands. So here's a quick example. Say I have ace-king suited. 
Okay, not even that good of a hand. Let's say queen 10 offsuit. Remember, when we raise a decent amount, he looks and he calls regardless. But let's just say he doesn't look in this example. Still calls our decent raise blind. So again, he's playing any two cards. So heads up with this guy and the flop is king 7-2. Doesn't even matter the suits. No flush possibilities. We bet he calls whether he has a pair or not. Turn is an offsuit 6. Do we bet or do we check? Let's just say we bet again and he's still blind and he calls. If he has a pair or even a straight draw, we don't know because he doesn't know. He hasn't looked. The river comes and pairs the board or just as a blank, it's a brick, whatever. It doesn't help us whatsoever. Do we keep betting knowing he's calling with any pair or how can we win is my question. Do we take a risk in going all in knowing there's a high chance he might call with any pair, even a two? So it's things like that is why we just limp and hope to catch something and hope he has a pair or two pair would be the nuts for him and we win. But back to this hand. A7 suited three ways and the flop is 3-5-3 three, three with two hearts. We check and it actually checks around. He says he doesn't like the board paired even though he could have a full house right now. We just don't know. The turn is a nine of diamonds. Again, sitting with no pair. We check the cutoff checks. Mr. Nashville on the button bets $35 and we call. Hey, are you taking my advice? Uh, it was six, it, I'm better than six deuce. I'm better than six oh, deuce right Maddie, now. But I'm I, telling you, Maddie, it's going to make more money if you loosen up a little bit. By now, they all know I have a YouTube channel. So he's talking about the YouTube channel, more views if I loosen up. I'm like, I'm trying. I'm not a bingo player. I'm a poker player. The river is a queen of diamonds. We miss and check to him. Well, I got luck now. Right there. And I'll show you to you. Queen, nine, three, five, three. So a nine. Ooh. Check to me as a nine. You have a nine? Yeah. Oh, then you're oh, good. Nice. Okay. Oh, yeah, nice. I'm okay. yeah. He said he has a nine. So again, let's play this out. Hypothetically, say if it was all the same, the same board to the river, but we lead the river. Is he really folding a nine? I mean, maybe if we make it $200 or something, but say we do that and he has a three or a good queen. He calls, we lose. So probably go $50, $75 on the river. And he calls with the nine. Again, burning money. Feels like we're burning money with any decision that we make. You guys really stink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's playing against a guy who tells you what he has and doesn't look at his cards. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. The blind guy. He's playing against the blind guy. <laughs> but when you don't <laughs> hit Jack Shea, <laughs> you're like <laughs> playing against two cards and you have no pair. What are you going to do? Unfreaking believable. See, it's not just me. We're all thinking the same thing. We have King Five of Spades. The normal blind rays go three ways. Flop is Ace King Three Rainbow. We check all the way around. The turn is a Four of Spades. Small blind checks. Big one? No. Mr. Nashville says he has a pair. I'm like, my pair is pretty good. So we bet $20. Small blind folds. Maybe he's sobering up a little bit because he raises to $85. We basically snap call because we just know he's full of it. The river comes, the worst card is the three of spades. Mr. Nashville, you never bluff. So. You on. always tell the truth. Yeah. I always Come tell on. the truth, but I also bluff. This is true. <laughs> Which no, is also the truth. Uh -huh, yeah. I, I tell it. you when I'm bluffing, I but that. that's what I'm saying. I that's true. Go ahead. I check. Nice. Nice. Uh, I'd, nice. The worst river card because I don't beat anything and we tie against everything. Tell me if you agree with me that it was a bad river. He said he had a pair, which I believed him, and the bottom one hit. So there goes that. Yes, he does check, which was strange. But say we bet for value, say $100, and then he raises, like how he did on the turn. Do we call a 4x raise 
or more in hopes he just has a four. So an ace beats us, a three beats us, and a king ties. So only really targeting a four. If we bet, do we think he's gonna make it easy and just smooth call? I doubt it, I don't know. This hand, the guy that went all in blind with Mr. Nashville earlier came back. I think he said he won on blackjack or roulette. So he's back. He raises to $25. Mr. Nashville next to add calls. And we have ace king in the under the gun. We bump things up to $125. The guy who originally raised folds. What do you want me to do, television? Go all in. Ice, huh? <laughs> you do? I mean, yeah. I'm gonna have to look that. I'll call you. I haven't looked yet, but I'll call you. So he calls, still not looking, and we're heads up to a flop against two random cards. Come on, dealer, an ace, a king, or two diamonds, anything. But nope, we get on again. It's 852 with two hearts. <laughs> I don't even know what to say right now. We're first to act, we bet $50. It would have been fun if it was just him up. done it pre flop, but we already we already passed that. Yeah. No, I oh, yeah. I couldn't go on. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not for. I don't know. Probably gonna have a pair. Gonna put me in a pair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a pair. That's it. You don't That's have a, a pair? Yeah. Donation? Yeah. The turn is a four of diamonds. Board is more connected now. He said he didn't have a pair, but he called, so probably is close to what's on the board. I'm thinking, well, if he didn't hit a four for a pair, we're probably still ahead. So we bet, again, $100 this time. More donations? Uh, now I don't think I can make a Oh, No, I mean, yeah, you don't have to worry. A little bit smaller no, and... I, I don't know what that yeah. is. Yeah. Side bet what? He has a... One pair. He already said he doesn't have a pair, so you lost. Yeah, you How high are you What do you think he has? Are you guys betting? I guess. I think I'm all for him. Otherwise, if you guys are betting. What, what, what do you think? I'm, I'm not. You're not going to say anything? Uh, no, I say high. jack high. Yeah, you jack high. No, no, no. I say, no, I say, queen high? I always say high. I always say high. With a jack. All right. I'll queen jack. Queen high, yes, these pots I agree are great, but give him a pair, or two pair, and us a flush or a stray, three of a kind, just end this madness already. I mean, it's great footage, but we've already been playing seven hours already, more than four at this table. It's past four in the morning, eyes are bloodshot, haven't eaten, <laughs> I'm getting old, I'm tired. The next hand we're going to go over, we have pocket kings in the small blind. Mr. Nashville opens the 25 in the hijack. The cutoff calls, the button calls, and can't go multi-way with this one. So we make it $100 to go. Not too much where we want Mr. Nashville to fold, like a proper 3x plus a denomination for the callers and another because out of position, but just enough to get the other two out of there. So we make it 100. Mr. Nashville does look and calls. The cutoff gets out of the way, but the button, who was a newer player who had two, maybe 2.5K in his stack, calls as well. So kind of need to be worried about him a little. Three ways to a flop, and it comes 752 with two spades. I'll check. I wish you actually did. <laughs> uh, you have a pair? I call. Reg I recall regardless. It's, I'm just bullshitting. You have a set? No. Got a set. Call. Set's good. This is making TV. Oh, oh, fuck. Oh, straight. The Nashville has a straight. Oh, straight's yeah, good. Eight, nine. Eight, nine. You gotta be Straight's good. That's your hot. Autographs right now. <laughs> what is it? Oh, sorry. Get him a f channel, bro. Yeah, got it in good. Oh Eight nine offsuit. No spade, so no backdoor flush. Just a gutter, and he drills the gutter, the six on the turn for a straight. <sighs> I mean, what can you do? We win a few small pots back from him, so money is still flying around. And this hand comes up. We have king nine of spades in middle position. The under the gun limps, we limp, hijack and the cutoff limp, button folds. I gotta make up a 
have a good number. Let's do uh, like 38. What do you think about that number, Stevie? That's pretty good. I was thinking like 20, what were we doing, 20, 25, so like 26, know, 27. It's, like it's, it's the same thing. Not it, that 38 is any different. Yeah, no. Flop is King 9-5 with two clubs. Mr. Nashville checks. We have top two pair. Great hand. Let's put some money in the middle. We bet $35. You got your shoe? Shoes. 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 How much? Let me look at one. Thank you. You can look at one. I'm on the board. 35. Thank you. I made it. 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 And this is all I get, Mr. Nashville. Nice to meet you, sir. Good job. Juice. Juice. I, I appreciate you, man. Thanks, like, subbing and shit. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> is it my turn? This is the least a pair. I don't know if that one is. Yeah, That's at least a pair? A, least a, pair. a big pair? <laughs> okay, I'm, okay. Yeah, they're, tell me. They're, they're all around. Fair enough. It's at least a pair. Okay. Is that enough? I'm going to get do that. Just do 40. Um, 40. Just trying to build. If you have a straight. I do not have a straight. A I'll go 40. I don't know what I have yet. Hopefully there's a good second. Well, you said it's a pair. I have a pair. I have a pair too. Hopefully something else here. I guess now it's enough to look. You can look. Wait. <clears throat> I thought this was... Oh shit, they might have three of a kind? They have three of a kind? Wow, nice. I fucking threw mind tricks on myself. I'm like, wait a minute, I thought that one was the pair. I have three of a kind. That's a very good hand. Do you believe me? You should probably bet it. Eh. Depends how much you bet. What's in there, like 150 bucks? I don't know. Spread it or no? Yeah, you can. For him? No, I don't care. 100. I'll give you 100, brother. I have three kings. Right. Oh, you have three kings? Oh. Whoa. Because I have a king too. You have a king? What the fuck? Well, two in my hand. What Me the fuck? Oh my yeah. god. No, can you show it, please? Yeah, wow. That's why I said, I'm like, yeah. Wait, I, thought, like I thought the other What the fuck? Was, Whoa, that is That's insane. I'm going out. I'm going out now. Against top two, huh? What is happening? Nice fucking hand. So top set versus top two, and he didn't look at his cards. So we're blocking the pairs on the flop, kings and nines, I guess, not blocking fives. But he said he had a pair, so that's information. So say he does have a king or a nine when he said he had a pair, which I believed. So the other card, which he didn't look at, there's only one more king if he had a pair of kings, or one more nine if he had a pair of nines. And he had top set against our hand. Like, how? There's just no justice in the world. I'm utterly convinced there is absolutely none left in this world. The world is doomed. And the year 2024 is the end for all of us. I'm seeing this over again. And I still can't believe what I'm watching. This is the last hand we're going to go over in this session. And probably what you all have been waiting for. That little teaser at the beginning of the video. At this point, it's hour five at this table, and I don't know what else to do to beat this guy. So we're gonna try something new that we've never done on this channel. You know what? I won't look. How about that? I'll do twenty. Hey, welcome to the game. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm still on your moves. Yeah. What are we gonna do now? I don't know. That, see what the board is, I guess. What if you don't look? Oh, I don't look. Well, do you want to do like flip one and then bet or something, or I don't know. You, you tell me. I know. I'll go twenty. Let's see who's luckier here. All right, now we flip one. Another. All right, now we got to look at you, one. All right, you tell me which one you want. Well, which? Do? Okay. Well, I kind of. Ooh, that's it. You already looked at one. I no, I didn't. I haven't looked. All right, tell me so, which one you want to see. I'll tell you which one you. Uh, but we get to see or. Well, we'll flip just flip a card. Okay. Uh, just the one away from you. 
All right, I want the one closest to you. What the hell? They're both. <laughs> Which one? Uh, this one is a little this closer. This one? Yeah. Okay, so flip. Oh, oh, you're dead. Oh, no, he's oh, not. Oh, he's, he's live. This is like a perfect heart flip. <laughs> well, then what do you want? I, well, I'm, I'm ahead, so I don't know. Are you? Are you? Yeah, what if of course five? I'm ahead. What if there's a five? I mean, <laughs> or a ten. <laughs> of clubs. <laughs> Best. Yeah, now it's actually it's. <laughs> this is fun for us. <laughs> this is the perfect card. That's way advanced. Change no information. Go fifty. Oh yes. Yeah. How far is Starbucks? Starbucks is closed. Oh, they? Oh, yeah. okay. Thanks. I haven't looked. Yeah, okay, take a I really years. haven't. Like, yeah, no. You bet, so I have to look. Uh, right. Well, I'll, okay, that's fire. Yeah, I, I, no, I guess, yeah, yeah. So you're saying you could. Well, no, yeah, you do what you do what you want to do. I really haven't. If I happen to have the nut flush, that's just. I really no, I know. I, I, I don't know what this is. It could be. <laughs> I love your market. Thank you. <laughs> well, this Possibilities? Has make, this has to make your. Look. Maybe, yeah. All in. So now I have to look, huh? I look so, yeah. Well, so I need, what do I need? I mean. Oh, I, what the f I can't. Hold on. Two, three hundred? I mean, I, I'm beating shit. And I'm shit. You are shit. <laughs> <laughs> you looked at it, right? Yeah. Look, you got what? It's a count. I do the count. Yes, thank you. That's mine. Yeah, please. Two ninety four. What is it? Two ninety four. Two ninety four. Yep. And I already have fifty out there. Two thirty four more. Or two forty four. I more mean, time. it's kind of ballsy one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's good for the game, so. Well, oh, hold on, hold on. You're a nice guy, TV. I don't, I don't want to put you in a bad spot. Yeah. You can ask a, a question. I'll I can answer. ask. A, I can answer. You can ask a question. I'll answer it. I'll give you the answer to one question, and I'll tell you what the question has to be. What the? F yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no. Sorry, we gotta no, hear this. Answer. No, I'm gonna tell you. Two ninety. <laughs> I don't have a pair. He's. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That is fair. That's the perfect <laughs> question to ask, honestly. That's a, that's a statement, not a question. Well, I'm done. <laughs> no, he was assuming he was going to ask him. He's, he's, he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. It's, it's your call, call, but I don't Yeah, of course. Pair. I don't have a pair either. <laughs> well, I see that. <laughs> Boom! Oh. Nice hand. Let me wow. see it. Nice hand. <laughs> Sorry, that's that no, no, I didn't mean fun. it to happen in a bad way. I don't no, know. it wasn't a bad way. Nice end. Apparently, playing blind doesn't work for me. Not like the way it works for Mr. Nashville. I don't know if people can call me a nit anymore for calling off with ace high. We try to play normal against this guy. Doesn't work. We try limp calling. Doesn't work. We try playing blind. That doesn't work. We have tried everything in the book, and he still has money in front of him. We play past 6 a.m. and the table didn't die, but there were only two tables left that night and the other table broke. So those players came on over, filled up our table, and they were some smart players as well. So playing against a blind guy and a few players who were also smart was kind of challenging. So we call it a night after a very long, stressful, but entertaining session. And I hope this video found you some entertainment as well. And there are many more hands that I didn't show because it was getting tough with all the cussing and trying to bleep things out. So what I decided to do was to make a whole other video with no edits whatsoever, no nothing, just the raw uncensored footage and make them available for members of the channel. So if you want to check out the whole uncensored version and know exactly what was said, when it was said, or if you just want to support the channel, you can go to my homepage and click the join button and can view members only videos. And also some different goodies as well. So check out that page if it's of interest to you. If not, just keep on clicking, watching, commenting. That's always appreciated. And we're off to the outro.
Well, it looks like we're doing a garage outro today because, I don't know, throughout the casino there was music being played and I didn't know what the rules are on all that stuff, so didn't want to get demonetized. But I don't even know what to say, to be honest. Like, you guys literally just watched Bingo. <laughs> I'm more disappointed in myself that, well, not really myself. I even told the table, I was like, I'm disappointed in myself that... I don't have all the money or that everybody here doesn't have all the money because yeah it was it, it was it was really that bad I kind of I want to walk around to be honest because yeah I feel weird just standing there so getting some steps in because I've been on my ass for the last eight hours but yeah the numbers you guys like the numbers in for 2k because we bought in and I don't even remember what we bought in for we're at one table with think 500 then add it on because this and then the table change saw those two maniacs and then one of them left um, but yeah bought in for 2k out for 1705 I mean only lost a couple hundred dollars but like I said it was just <laughs> it was it was so weird because I mean going all in like that or raising 20 25 dollars each hand blind i'm like and i still can't win like what the f is going on i can't win against a blind guy i mean that sounds kind of bad but somebody that is doing that blind and i still can't win <laughs> like am i that bad of a poker player i mean he cracked my aces um I think cracked kings once. <laughs> that one hand was kind of cool though. Well, I was like, let's just do it blind ourselves. And then you flip over a card, I flip over a card. I mean, he had open ended to a straight flush. I mean, was that a bad call? The 295, 300 on the river? I mean, you guys let me know, but I thought it was super fun. I was just trying to keep the table alive and I figured if I gave him money, he would stay. So that kept the table going and I was right. I mean, he's going to do that regardless whether he has anything or not. He sees my hand, ace jack, it's ace high. He's going to bet it to win. So, I don't know. I think I made the right decision, but obviously it wasn't. He had a straight. And he did say that he didn't have a pair. I don't know, guys. But, yeah, this might just be the longest rant ever and i literally might get lost just going in zigzags because i don't know if i'm going up or i'm going down but yeah we played for eight hours might even be more not gonna lie i have so much footage to go over my phone was yelling at me saying that i have no memory left so i was deleting things while i was playing trying to take notes trying to just follow what was going on i mean the last hour and a half this guy was falling asleep just throwing money like we're like it's on you man <laughs> and he would just already have the twenty dollars out there i mean this is like that was the dream scenario anybody could ask for because you want to be at a table like that i mean people would pay money to be on a table with a player like that I mean, he was a cool guy, the whole table was cool, having fun, cracking jokes, and when the other table broke, that, our table got, it was playing a little different, like, it felt like, I don't know, you can't even play cards, like real cards at that time. See, again, I'm rambling. It's it's 6 in the morning. Like, guaranteed if I go outside right now, the sun might be up. So, sorry if you're hearing this and it sounds way off. But, yeah, like, what do you do? You have, I would say, ace-jack suited. I think I had that a few times. Ace-jack of spades. And, again, he raises blind, whatever, $20. A few people call. I mean, if you raise, he's going to look at his cards, and then other people, whatever, I don't know. Or like, again, do you just call or do you raise? If you have a really good hand, do you call or raise? Or if you have a mediocre hand, like say seven, eight suited, 
a hand that you normally would play, but because he's going blind, you're probably behind, or you might be behind. I mean, seven, eight suited, five, six suited, stuff like that. And yeah, the flop comes all opposite color of your cards. Ace Jack suited and it comes all diamonds and you have spades. It's like he he could have any two cards. So I don't know. I just I haven't played with a player like that in a very long time. And again, it was it was it was it was I mean, it was difficult to play against. Let's just put it that way. But I can go on and on about all the hands and what happened, but at the end of the day, I did lose money, so that put a damper in the 10K challenge for this week. So that sucks. That really sucks, to be honest. I mean, I should have hit my 10K today, but I didn't. So again, maybe I'm the worst poker player around on YouTube. I don't know. But yeah, I'm a little disappointed in myself. I am I mean, it was fun. Like, it, it literally was fun. But, I mean, it's more fun to win money. Like, I don't think anybody can uh, disagree on that one. But, again, only a couple hours. I mean, a couple hours. A couple hundred lost and played for eight hours. But, yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm done. I'm freaking tired. I'm going to go back to the room because it's the morning. And I don't know what the hell I'm going to do today. But I need food. I need sleep. So that's what we're going to do. I appreciate you guys, all you watching to this point. If you heard me ramble, please just comment down below. Ramble. Because you're a real trooper if you made it this long. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, I'm going to go to bed. Good morning, good night, whenever you're seeing this. And uh, good luck at your local tables. Hopefully you have a player like I did today, tonight. When you guys play and you have a lot better luck than I had and you take all the money, all of it. You need all of it. But yeah, always remember, it's a blessed day. You woke up today, you saw this. I'm Matty Ice. See, Matty Ice. I even wore the hat today. But yeah, this is Games Poker. Peace out.